How's it going everyone? Welcome back to another World of Tanks video. Today I'm going to review in the T29, which is a tier 7 American heavy tank, and it's got one of the best turrets tier for tier in the game. Now this tank is kind of a one trick pony of what it can do, but I'm going to explain all of that later on in the video, and also compare it to some other tanks. Now let's start with the armour of this tank, and to get a full overview we're going to head into Tanks GG for this. Okay, so here we are in Tanks GG, and as you can see, I've got the T29 model loaded. Now, we're now just going to go and click here and go to the live visual indicator of the armor. And as you can see, this thing is a monster. Straight away, you're going to be able to see that this tank has a lot of armor, especially for a tier 7. Now, considering that this can meet tier 9s, yes, tier 9s are going to go through this with pretty much ease. You know, if you're, if you're a tier 9 and you can shoot here, which most of the time you can, you're going to pen it. Now, albeit this is quite a small target, the same goes for this Coppola up here. You're not going to hit this most of the time. So, if you are a tier 9 and you want to take this thing out, just load gold and just go straight through the sides of this and the cheeks. Or you could go underneath and you're going to pen it pretty much 9 times out of 10 as long as you don't get unlucky and hit this little bit here. As you can see, the hull armor is basically useless. It's not going to defend you against much at all. Um, there is not much point of trying to expose your hull armor. You want to sit hull down just like this. And if I get my trusty web browser again, this is how you want to be looked at. This is how you want to be you want to be seen by the enemies. Because if you do anything else, if you go like that, they're going to pen you right there with that green bit of armor. That's only a hundred and what is it? Hundred and fifty millimeters of penetration that they'll need to obviously go through it. Side armor basically useless and also you know this tank is only good when it's hold down and it can just bully people that don't have enough penetration to go through this bit here this bit here well, well albeit that is quite a small spot but up here you can definitely get away with penning it especially if you're a little bit taller than it because then it becomes even easier to pen or fire gold straight for the cheeks Okay, so what about the gun of the tank? Well, the gun is very nice. Okay, now for a tier 7 tank, 198 pen is fantastic. And then you get 320 alpha for that as well, for a maximum of 400 damage if it, you know, high rolls. You know, that, that's going to be very, very nice. Considering that the IS gun is 175 pen with 390 alpha and it gets quite a long reload, you know, this tank is very nice for what it is. And it does have a pretty decent reload time of under 9 seconds and I'm not even using food on this tank. As you can see I'm also using just gun rammer, coated optics and vert stabs. What I like to use on most of my tanks. Now I don't use vents anymore and instead I use vert stabs uh, along with coated optics. Because overall if I'm not going to be using food most of the time I can't use vents. Because the view range just won't be enough. And I don't really want to sacrifice vert stabs for vents because I much prefer having better gun handling, especially on tanks that don't have good gun handling in the first place, or even a long aiming time like this tank does. You know, it's, it's very nice to have vert stabs over vents. What else is good about a tank? Well, it gets great view range as well. It gets, I'm happily sitting here at 451, and as you can see, I'm not really pushing it ultra hard. You know, we do have a pretty damn decent crew in this tank, but at the end of the day, you know, you only need to get I don't know, maybe one or two crew skills and you've got this. You know, it, it's not it's not very hard to get this. Especially the fact that the commander isn't the one with the situational awareness. That means that you can then just load off situational awareness to the radio operator and then leave the commander to get six cents on his second crew skill rather than the situational awareness. Mobility-wise, 35 kilometers an hour top speed is not very fast. Engine power of 800 and 12.29 specific power to weight ratio. Yeah, you're not going to get anywhere very, very fast in this tank. Another thing I do want to mention is that it's dispersion. It is 0.4. You know, you are going to put that down to minus 1, minus 0.01, you know, with Brothers in Arms. But 0.4 is not the best and you're not really very accurate. Obviously, you could go and put vents on it and then you go and put other stuff and it's going to make it better. But this is why I, I also use vert stabs because it just helps out a lot more overall. So how does this tank compare to the other tier 7 heavy tanks? Well, right here I've got a comparison of every tier 7 heavy tank that I think is roughly similar to it. You know, obviously there's the Tiger P and the Tiger, but they have different guns and their armor is not really 
Well, they don't really have armor. I mean, the Tiger P, yeah, sure, it does have some, but it's not really very good. As for all of these, you know, I just chucked in the King Tiger just because it's another tier 7 American. Uh, but really, this tank is nothing compared to this. And here's what I was saying about the IS. Yes, it gets 390 Alpha, but look at the penetration. And considering that this tank can meet this tank, you know, if this tank meets it whole down, even if, I mean, what does it have on its premium rounds? It has 217. That's not even enough to pen its turret when it wants to. I mean, unless it gets unless it gets lucky with its you know RNG rolls where it will pen, you know you, you're most of the time you're not going to pen it. You know, so this tank, if it's hold down against an IS, it, it just laughs at it. It it doesn't care if there's an IS that is sitting in front of it and d doesn't have any shots at its hull because if it doesn't have shots at its hull, it can't do anything. Yes, the DPM is better on the IS, but that's about it. That is the only thing that is good about the IS compared to the T29. Now, I mean, straight away again, KV-3. You know, it's the same story as the IS. Exactly the same story as the IS. I mean, the, the KV-3 is in fact worse. It doesn't have as good gun innovation. It doesn't have as good gun traverse. Yes, the, uh, the KV-3 is more well armoured though. But I mean, either one of these tanks, if it meets the T29... And, it, and the T-29s hold down, they're not going to do anything to you. you. You can just laugh at them. The same thing goes for the Oni. The Oni is a very well-armoured tank, but has weak spots, especially on the turret. You could pen this tank, if we actually preview it, you can pen this tank right here if you just load, I think it's 220 or 200 and something millimetres of pen. You know, and considering the fact that the T-29 has a gun that can do 245 pen, yeah, you just, yeah. It's just going to go through it like butter. 45 TP. This is probably the closest comparison to the T-29's gun. Um, you know, it does get lower pen, sure, but it also does get pretty decent turret armor. You know, I mean, fair enough. It's not as good as the T-29's. You know, it does have a cupola right there, and it's pretty well angled everywhere else around the tank. You know, considering that it's 170, when you, you're you going to get about 220, maybe 230, you know, to go through it. But it's got that massive cupola, and yeah, it's just not as good as the T29. And, once again, it's only got 225 pen, which is enough to go through it, if it gets lucky and does pen the weak spots. But it's not that 245 that can almost guarantee you penning it. If you meet another T29... Just shoot it where I showed you with your premium rounds because you'll just go through it. Now, obviously, it's not all sunshines and rainbows for the T29. When it comes to mobility, it's very slow. I mean, even the IS looks pretty decent. It gets a better traverse speed than the T29. I mean, better power to weight. Not so good engine power and it's not got a good top speed, but it weighs less as well. So that better specific power to weight means that the IS is going to go a bit faster than the T29. I mean, the KV-3 is just a massive slug of a tank and it's, you know, it's, yeah. The same goes for the Oni. Even though it's got the by far the biggest engine power, it doesn't mean anything because, you know, it's so heavy. It's 100 tons. And then obviously you're not going to beat the 45 TP, which has the best specific power to weight ratio. And basically... The same top speed as the T29. King Tiger wise. It's got the best top speed. But that's about it. View range. You're looking at the joint best. Along with the Oni and the King Tiger. Russian tanks are completely blind. As well as the 45 TP. Also signal range. I don't know why this is so good. In comparison to everything else. I mean look at the. Look at the 45 TP. That's not very good. But signal range doesn't really matter that much. Okay, so we've spoken all about this tank now. You know everything there is to know about its stats and how it compares to the other tanks. Let's now watch some gameplay of how it performs in the game. Let's go. Okay, so here we are on Cliff and we are actually in a tier 8 game. So we're not top tier. Now, straight away, I want to go into the middle of the map. Now, why do I want to do this? Well, the only other way that I could play this is if I go around to the right or I go around to the left and hope that I don't get shot as I go up and go into that kind of cliff area. Wow, the whole map's called cliff. But the whole like kind of 
hilly area over at the F F three area, like there. Now, the reason why I want to go into the middle of the map over those two positions is because I can sort of go hold down in the position that I'm going to get into. And with this tank, obviously, you want to go hold down. If you don't go hold down, you're pretty much not playing this tank right. Because it has no hull armor, as we've shown. Now, straight away, you're seeing that it's not very fast, is it? You know, we're slowly getting there. But slowly is the key word. You know, we're going at 31, 32 kilometers an hour uh, over this kind of bit of a rough ground. You know, so if it's not on tarmac and you're going cross country, your top speed's going to suffer. You know, as you can see here, slight incline, we're going all the way down to 23, now 12, you know, it's, it's not very fast. And considering that it doesn't have that good engine power, yeah, you, you're not going to get anywhere very fast. But we have made it, and now I want to see if I can get into the position that I want to be in. Now, I did actually think that the house wasn't there. Um, I know, you know, should have gone to spec savers, but, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I'm a bit blind, what can I say? Now, as you can see, I did actually spot this T29, and I didn't spot him, well, I spotted him, but I didn't realise it until, basically, this point, I was thinking, ah, oh, yeah, I've made a mistake. But I try to get behind this, behind this rock, and also track the T29 out in the open so that my team can finish him off. Now, obviously, I was getting lower and lower and therefore my hull armor is actually getting more angled now i don't know whether or not he tried to pen my hull armor or whether he just went for the turret and just pure panic uh, but i tried to go down lower and lower so he could only hit my turret and luckily it did work for us i think he hit our tracks uh or maybe it was i don't know but in this position right here this is where you can dominate the game you know right here you have this canonian jagdpanzer has no idea. It can't do anything against me. He could actually load heat and go through me right now. But, you know, he's, he's not going to because, I don't know, maybe he just wants to save his credits. Maybe he thinks he can hit my weak spot. You know, but right here, we're just, we're just showing you the pure strengths of this vehicle. You know, we're going into position. We're staying here. We're not giving them a shot at a hull. And we're only exposing the turret. This Jackson is a bit annoying um, because I never seem to be able to hit him. As you can see, I, I fire quite a few shots at this Jackson in the hope that I will hit him, but it never really does. Uh, as you can see, I'm even fully aiming the shots and they're still not going where I aimed them. But I guess that is the point, you know, 0.39 accuracy I do have on this tank. Um, and as you can see, uh, he, he's, he's just hiding from me and I don't blame him. You know, this Jackson's actually playing it quite well, you know, because he is spotting me now and again for the artillery, and then he's just hiding back into cover. And good old Bert's giving us a few love bumps, you know. He's, he's loving life, just absolutely taking a dump on me from the back of the map. Uh, but we do we do sue out Bert later on in the game. And there's the Jackson again, you know, we're not <laughs> we're still not connecting those shots. But it doesn't really matter too much, we're still doing okay. And as long as, you know, everyone doesn't rush me, I could sit here for as long as I like. Well, providing that Bert doesn't keep, you know, taking a dump on me. And right now I was thinking, well, I could push up. I mean, there are still people here, though, though that's not a very, you know, good idea to do that. Luckily, we do actually track the Indian Panzer, and he doesn't appear to have a repair kit, so he's just taking loads and loads of damage, and now he's dead. So, okay, that's a great result for us on it. Do we hit this Jackson now? Yes, we finally put a shot into him after, I don't know, maybe like six or seven shots that I've been firing at him. You know, and now everyone else to my right is now dead. So it's just these enemies in front of me. And I'm feeling pretty good at this point. You know, I, I even spot Bert, you know, he's finally there, you know, hopefully my team can actually kill him. And now I did want to shoot this Jackson, but I don't really know where he's gone. I thought that he was right there, so I'm thinking, okay, well, I'll go and try and take out the artillery. Because obviously, he needs to go. Now we're going to aim, and he's already dead before I can even pull the trigger. And now the Jackson gets spotted again. I'm guessing by the EBR Hotchkiss. But I want to try and kill him, because he has been annoying me for most of this game. Now my team is still pretty passive in this game. As you can see, they're still at the back of the map pretty much. You know, this A43 and this Panzer... Um, is that a Panzer 4S over there? Wow, why would you buy that tank? Okay, right, anyway. 
But that's besides the point. We have a Cromwell now, and he could be an issue for us. But unfortunately, he, um... Yeah. Well, he, he just kind of rushed us. Yeah. If the Cromwell had actually stayed at distance, like, you know, and just kept peeking up and down the, um... The, the ridge line over to my right, he could have actually been pretty pretty big issue for us because we might not have hit him and he kept putting shots into our hole. But we take out the Colonial Jagdpanzer as well and we're now going to try and take this guy out. Uh, but there's no shot. And I also get invited to platoon by the AMX. So we should get Brothers in Arms as long as I survive this game. And there's only a Jagdpanzer 2 left and he's not even looking at me so it is all looking pretty good. So, I mean, overall, I mean, we've had a pretty decent game. And that showed you the strengths, kind of the weaknesses of the tank as well with the hull armor. You know, because, and as you can see, the poor accuracy. So, yeah, let's take a look at the, um, the results of this game. Okay, so as you can see, great result for the T-29. We've got Ace Tanker along with High Caliber, Steel Wall, and, of course, that Brothers in Arms medal. You know, we did get 70,000 credits and 2.4k XP. As you can see, we did come top of the team and we got 1.6k base. Now, as you can see, we take home 45,000 credits, which is, yeah, that's pretty decent. You know, considering the fact that, you know, we're not using food, so our credit profit is going to be pretty good. And honestly, this tank's not that bad for making credits. You know, if you're free to play player, I'd actually recommend this tank to make some credits if you want to. Because, you know, you don't need to fire APCR rounds all the time. You don't need to, you know, spend credits on food every round. You know, you, you could have a great game and make some great credits with this tank. The T29 is easily one of the best grinds that you can have in the game. Yes, it is quite bad stock, but once you get fully upgraded, it's so good. Now, if you did enjoy this video, then you know what to do. You know, make sure you subscribe, make sure you leave a like, and I'll see you all in a bit.